Okay. Good evening, I'm Bill Bowie. Welcome to our committee and board meeting this evening, January 12th, 2022. It is 6.40 p.m. and I will make the requisite motion so that we can conduct these meetings virtually. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the Fairfax County Emergency Ordinance, the Park Authority Board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record as we did at our first electronic meeting. During our meeting, if you wish to be recognized, please raise your hand. And when I recognize you, please say your name. This will ensure that you are recognized and the public knows who is speaking. If you intend to vote nay or abstain on any item, we will need to do a roll call on those votes. Because each member of this board is participating in meetings from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and an appropriate volume for all of the other members. Accordingly, I'm gonna conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in these meetings to state your name, the location from which you, and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. And following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member's voice and we'll go alphabetically. Also note as the evening progresses, if additional board members join us for our meetings, I will ask them to verify their audibility and their location from which they are attending. All right, so we will conduct the roll call at this time. Maggie Godbold. Hi, I'm Maggie Godbold, and I am dialing in from my residence in the Sully District. Linwood Gorham. This is Linwood Gorham, and I'm participating uh, from my home in uh, the Mount Vernon District. Tim Hackman. Tim Hackman, participating from my residence in the Drainsville District. Faisal Khan. Faisal Khan at my residence in Providence District. Ron Kendall. This is Ron Kendall participating from my home in Mason District. Ken Quincy. Ken Quincy participating from my home in the Providence District. Kyle Stone. Uh, this is Kyle Stone joining from my residence in the Braddock District. Mike Thompson. This is Mike Thompson from my home in the Springfield District. And I'm Bill Bowie, and I am attending from my residence in the Hunter Mill District. At this point, I'll pass the virtual gavel to Vice Chairman Quincy so that I may be heard to make the requisite motion. I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Ken Quincy, you have heard the motion. Is there a second? This is Mike Thompson. I second the motion. Ken Quincy, it has been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. That motion passes. Thank you, sir. Second, this is Bill Bowie. Second, having established that each member's voice may be heard by each other member, we must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures, the fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of this board and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that this board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video conference service. It is so moved. Ken Quincy, you have heard the motion. Is there a second? This is Tim Hackman. I second the motion. Ken Quincy, is there a discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thanks, baby. Mr. Po Mr. Chairman, the motion passes. Thank you, sir. This is Bill Bowie. Not the preliminary matters are complete. We can begin the committee meetings. And reminder, please, when you're talking, please state your name. 
So Mr. Gorham, I believe you have the floor for the Park Operations Committee. This is Linwood Gorham. I'd like to call the Park Operations Committee to order. Uh, and I'd like to ask Kurt Lewis to please present the item. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Kurt Lewis. I'm the Park Operations Division Director. Tonight, I'll be presenting what I believe is the first uh, Park Operations Project's quarterly update. Uh, this one will cover us from April to September. I realize April is not necessarily the first quarter of FY22, but uh, we had some good projects at the tail end of FY21 we wanted to share with you as well. Uh, by no means does this represent all the projects that we do in Park Ops, but rather shows you some of the more significant projects we in Park Ops have been doing. Next slide. Before we talk about this slide, I'd just like to uh, give you a little bit more background as to how we, how we started prioritizing projects. Uh, about five or six years ago, we started by, uh, staff started to uh, assess, they, they assessed all the uh, condition, condition assessments on all the asset types uh, five or six years ago and graded them out. Uh, with that master list, if you will, that's where we started from. Uh, we continue to use that and, and work from that uh, for, for, the, for the continuum until we get through all of our parts. Obviously, we have more projects than we have money, so we're still working through that list. Uh, next slide. Oh, this slide. Hold on. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Allison. <laughs> uh, but what we do is we, we first we start with, with the, the master list. We look at that. We pull the, the projects off that are the worst worst of the worst, and then we annually conduct an inspection on those again at the proposed project sites, whether it's a court, parking lot, trails, bridges, playgrounds, buildings and structures. We'll look at those, regrade them, make sure nothing's changed or based on safety, revenue, amount of use, lights, and then equity. Uh, we grade them out like, it, like a, a, a report card from A to F, and we use that to generate our annual work plan for which projects we're gonna do. Obviously, we've got plenty of uh, projects that are in the same category. I don't believe we have too many, more, too many Fs left, but we've worked on most of those. We're in the Ds and Cs now, but we do have plenty of those. So from there, we just have to work through uh, getting estimates, uh, getting, a select, getting estimates and then identifying how much money we have to work with. And then from that, the project selection, we use uh, the ranking system for the projects. And then we go to an annual review, which is uh, the Park Authority leaderships, and then we get approval. From there, we move on to, again, getting estimates and lining up contractors for the, for the year. Next slide, please. Here are some of the projects that we were able to accomplish in the last four, three to four months. In the uh, Bruin basketball courts in Drainfield District. This is a complete reconstruction of the basketball courts. Remove the asphalt and all the fencing and anything else and redid that. This was done with general sinking funds. The estimate is thir was 30,000 and we completed this in July. Baron DeVore was our project manager and ATC Corporation was the, the contractor. Next slide, please. Bruin bas uh, racket courts were next in the Rainsville District. We reconstruction of the racket courts, removal of all the asphalt and servicing and amenities and, and fencing as well. General sinking funds was how we, how we paid for it and 106,000 was our cost. Again, this was completed the same time the courts were completed in, in July. And Karen was our project manager and ATC Corporation was the contractor. As you can see, you can see all the old cuts and cracks and all that. And now courts look really good. Eakin Community Park racket courts in the Providence District, construction of two racket courts. This was another reconstruction where we removed the asphalt and servicing and all the amenities and sinking funds were covering this one as well. This was 190,000 and we finished this in August. Karen was the project manager and ATC Corporation was the contractor. Next. This is a little different. This is in a private district. This was demolition and disposal of, the, of a, a golf cart bridge on the trail there. 
construction of, of a new concrete bridge we put in and sinking funds paid for this, uh, $17,000 and we finished this in July. And Karen was also our project manager. Uh, AccuBid Construction did this though. And uh, the pictures really don't show justice, but it's really a nice bridge now. And hopefully it'll hold up. Next slide, please. Uh, Stephen Foster School Site Racket Courts, uh, Mount Vernon District, reconstruction of two racket courts and a practice wall, removal of all the concrete wall, re asphalt resurfacing and fencing. Project was funded by general sinking funds. And it was 200,000 completed in end of May. Aaron was our project manager and AccuBid and ATC Corporation were the contractors. As you can see, look at all those cracks that were in the, the previous one. Now it turned out really nice. Next, Giles Run Pond at Laurel Hill Park. This is kind of something a little different. We tried to show you something a little different. Mount Vernon District, we uh, came in around, cleaned up around the pond, all the woody growth from the embankment adjacent pond. Uh, it's for facilitated better access to the pond and improved view sheds and it'll keep out some of the invasive stuff as well. And the project was funded by the Laurel Hill Maintenance Funds. It was uh, $50,000 and 500. And it was finished in end of July. And Beth was our project manager for that and Angler Environmental did the work. Next. Laurel Hill Turkey Barn improvements. Uh, Mount Vernon District removed all the brush around the Turkey Barn. Project was funded with county construction building infrastructure funds. It was 5,850. Uh, we finished that in September. Russ Davis was the project manager and Davey Tree did the work. We still do have uh, some other work going on. Uh, a consultant's looking at how to shore up the building. Uh, when, we, when we get the report back, we'll take a look at what we need to do there. Next, please. This is some of our in, internal work here. Poplar Tree Park restrooms renewal in the Sully District. We added new tile, replaced the sinks and mirrors and hand dryers, and made sure everything was in ADA compliance. Uh, resealed the ceiling, replaced the lights with LED. And this project was funded with county uh, building infrastructure funds. It was $71,690, and we finished that in May. Ron Pearson was our project manager and Jay Roberts was our contractor. Much nicer than the stainless steel urinals. Uh, Laconia Park trail improvements, Mason District installed a new trail for a walking track, overlaid all the existing trails in the park, installed a concrete curb as you can see to replace the rotten wood timbers and the new concrete asphalt trail segments are, are for, ADA for ADA access. Funded with sinking funds, the scope, it was uh, 51,565, and we finished this in late September. Karen was the project manager, and Tibbs Paving did the work. Next slide, please. The Down Terrace Park, Mason District. This was a shelter renewal. We replaced the roof and the trim boards, pressure washed and painted the structure, and that was funded with county construction building infrastructure funds uh, was $19,880 and we finished that in April. Ron Pearson was the project manager and Jay Roberts was the contractor. Next please. Another shelter, uh, Rose Lane Park Shelter, Mason District. Uh, shelter renewal, this one a little bit more work involved. Repaired the roof substructure and replaced the shingles, pressure washed and painted the structure again with county construction building infrastructure funds. It was 11,770 and we finished this in April as well. Ron Pearson was the construct, construction manager and Jay Roberts did the work. Next please. Here's another restroom, Burke Lake Park Marina restroom in the Springfield district. Uh, restroom renewal, we removed the wall, the heater and the conduit, replaced the tile and concealed the pipes. We placed hand dryers and urinals, and this was funded with county construction building infrastructure. As you can see in the old pictures, the, the piping is sticking out below the sinks and the walls, and, and we, we've moved all those back into the walls, into a chase. So it looks a lot better, and it's a lot easier for us to work on when we have the chase. Estimated cost was 76,990, and we finished this in April. 
Ron Pearson was our project manager and Jay Roberts did the work. Next slide, please. Another restroom, Greenbrier Park restrooms renewal, Springfield District, place the tiles, sinks, mirrors, hand dryers. Uh, got ADA compliance in there, added a changing station and created the ADA, uh, corrected the ADA route, cleaned the roof and painted the trim. Project was funded with county construction building infrastructure funds. It's $73,090. And we finished this in May. Ron Pearson was the project manager and Jay Roberts again did the work. Looks much nicer than the stainless steel again. Next. Lee District, uh, Lehigh Park outdoor restrooms in Lee District. We replaced the roof, renewal of the interior and exterior of the restroom building and funded with county construction building infrastructure funds. You can see this one looks a little different because it had a stall and a urinal in the original. In order for us to get ADA, we, we weren't able to do that. So we only have one, one, rest, one uh, facility inside each restroom. So it's basically, a, now it's a unisex restroom. It was 123,660 and we finished this in September and Alan Crawford was our project manager and Jay Roberts did the work again. Next, see that was it. Questions, any questions? Perfect timing. This is uh, Linwood. I uh, just wanted to uh, comment that everything looks great. Um, I did notice one of the projects that you did uh, in Aiken Park, which was my neighborhood park growing up. And I know how old I am and I know when that tennis court was built and that tennis court looks really, really good for me at over 50 years old. Uh, Ron, I saw your hand up. Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask a question I and mean, it pertains to a lot of the restroom renovations. Were we able to do any kind of a volume uh, uh, cost improvement? It looked like all the tile was pretty much the same tile, same stuff, same fi fixtures. Um, is that something we could consider to do consistently in the future when we're redoing all these restrooms? Because I don't mind them all looking the same if we can get a value out of those purchases. We are getting a good value of it. Most of them uh, are running about the same, roughly 70 to 75, uh, excluding any, some of them have to have some roof work done. So that, that runs it up a little bit. The contractor is giving us a, uh, pretty good price for, for having to, to using all the same materials in, in all the facilities. So yes, we're hoping that we can continue to get that same good price as we roll through a few others this year. All of the, ten, all of the tennis courts really, really look great. It's just unfortunate that um, these all came before the pickleball study came out because in those greenfield situations, we may have had some opportunities that we now do not have. So that that's really my only comment. I mean, it, it would have been a perfect opportunity to do something. I'm just sorry that we missed that window by four to six months. That striping can still be added though, don't you think? Sure, it, but it's an additional cost now and an additional project management and an additional project period. So it's just something that would have to be rescheduled and, and coordinated all over again. It just, it's just unfortunate that we didn't do it. All the projects moving forward, I can say all the project, all the court projects moving forward, we actually will apply the criteria, the, the new pickleball criteria to it and go from there. Well, one of the questions I would ask then, because it looked like you you completely took out all the asphalt and everything, the fencing and everything at these locations. Um, when we do that, reimagine what the, those courts look like. You may have an opportunity to put pickleball courts by themselves along with tennis courts in a, in a total reconfiguration of that space. So, I mean, that's, that, that's the opportunity that I, that I was really looking at more so than, than trying to double stripe for it to accommodate tennis and pickleball. Any other questions? Linwood, you're the chair. I was waiting for my clock to finish. I didn't want to think you guys wanted to hear it. 
<laughs> uh, sorry about that. It is okay. seven o'clock. Uh, seeing no more questions. Uh, no, Lynn, wait, Lynn, Lynn, I had my hand up. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, Bill, I, I understand what you're saying, but I can two two things. One, sometimes double strike means the only option, but two, one thing we may want to consider to your point is whether or not a project can be slightly expanded. In other words, if you're going to go in and do all the resurfacing, do all that work and get rid of fences and do stuff, can you make it, you know, can you make that piece of court a little bit longer, a little bit wider, whatever, to actually, do, you know, to, to even expand and give us that opportunity you were just talking about? Yeah, I, I mean, if, if, you've got a, if you've got a blank canvas there, just look at look at the possibility of reconfiguring to give to make everybody happy and give pickleballers their own pickleball court and tennis players their own their own uh, tennis court. Yeah, uh, you know if, if we're starting from you know ground zero, we've got other people joining us, so we're going to have to wrap this up quick uh, so we don't get in trouble. So with that, um, I hope any other questions can be done offline. I'd like to thank Kurt Lewis and uh, adjourn the. Uh, the uh, um, operations meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Linwood. Thanks, Kurt. Mr. Quincy? I'm Ken Quincy. I'd like to call the Planning and Development Committee to order. And I'll ask uh, Beth Yanetta to present uh, the infrastructure projects. Beth. Do we have to read some new people in? What did we get? Let's see, is, has anyone, um, has Dr. Carter joined us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Linwood. Uh, Bill, could yeah. you? Dr. Carter, would you please state your name and, and the location from where you are calling? Certainly, I'm Cynthia Jacobs Carter from my home in Lee District. Greetings. Is there anyone else? Is Avena still here? Or is she, is she here? Is she here? I'm sorry. She is scheduled for 7.30. Okay. So seeing that there's none, can, uh, can everybody hear Dr. Carter? Yes. 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 So I would move that Dr. Carter be uh, admitted to this meeting as a member of this board. I second the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay, that motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Quincy, back okay. to you. I'm still Ken Quincy, and I'd like to call the Planning and Development Committee meeting to order and ask Beth Yanata to present the infrastructure projects. Good evening, everybody. My name is Beth Yanata, and I am the Trails and Infrastructure Coordinator in the Planning and Development Committee. Uh, tonight, I'm here to talk about the, uh, your annual update for the infrastructure projects that impact parkland. As you know, uh, park staff monitors ongoing transportation and other infrastructure projects that impact parkland throughout the county. An update to the park board on the current status of projects occurs annually. Um, I was here in December, but obviously we had technical difficulties. So tonight I'm trying to move forward with my presentation for you and we can um, hopefully wrap up last year. Uh, next slide, Allison. These projects um, are at various stages of planning, design, and construction. As part of your park board package, there's an attachment which lists 23 active projects and their status and details. However, tonight, I'm only gonna highlight about 11 projects that have seen a lot of activity or have um, new developments. Four of these projects are new as of this year, which have been submitted for uh, review. Next slide, please. We're gonna kick things off tonight with the I-495 NEXT project. This is um, a extension of the hot lanes between Tyson's Corner and the American Legion Bridge. Um, most of the activity, we, we've talked about this project uh, numerous times. This is in the Drainsville District and Providence District, and it's currently in design. This is a design build project. Um, so you have seen concepts of the general layout, the ongoing activities right now are getting into the actual um, detailed designs for the project. They've made some changes, which you can see here in your upper right of the screen. 
at Georgetown Pike regarding pedestrian improvements um, and some other uh, channelizations for off ramps. And the picture at the bottom is some of the ongoing activity that we have um, with a, associated with the design work. They're doing borings for sound wall designs and um, really shoring up the designs for that project. So um, we've had any activity you see out there is just doing some early investigative work for utilities and other design work. Next slide, please. The I-66 uh, outside the Beltway project is ongoing construction if you've been out there. It, it includes various districts, but tonight I just wanted to highlight one of the pedestrian projects that actually Park Authority staff is working on and is currently in design. Uh, this is for the Random Hills project, which is located about smack dab in the middle of the corridor of improvements. And what will happen, this is at Route 50 and Random Hill Road. Um, park staff is gonna tie into the pedestrian improvements and underpasses, which they are building at the I-66 and Route 50 interchange to uh, create a pathway through the park to connect over to the existing trail network on Random Hills Road. This is part of the um, parallel, I-66 parallel trail that they're building, which you can see in red on the upper part of your graphic. Next slide, please. This is a snapshot of the Shirley Gate Road Extension Project, which will be implemented by FCDOT. This is in the Springfield District and it's currently at 30% design. On the graphic on the left, you can see some um, purple lines. That is the extent of the VDOT project, which is currently under um, right away in design for the widening of Fairfax County Parkway and the Pope's Head Road interchange. The FCDOT project will tie into that project and, and make an, a, con a connection all the way up to Braddock Road where Shirley Gate Road currently terminates. We've had some recent activities with some zoning cases on this uh, project as well. Um, there was a church located uh, that will be located just south of the green stormwater pond that you see in, your, in the photograph here. Um, so we worked through that as well as coordinating with the VDOT project and now the FCDOT project. So this one's had a lot of activity that we've been working on. This project is um, in the Springfield district. And I, as I said, it's in design. Next slide, please. We have the Snowden Ashford roadway project, and this is in the Mount Vernon district, and it's currently in, in right away. This is being implemented by FCDOT. The project will extend, it will improve roadway and drainage improvements between Lorton Road and the Laurel Hill Reformatory adaptive reuse area. This road is essentially used to be a driveway entrance into the prison area. And in order to meet, bring it up to um, public road standards, it has to be improved. The project, which is um, the extent of the project, which is shown in the bottom, um, extends from Lorton Road, which is on the left hand side of your screen and continues all the way up to where the new townhouses have been built near the adaptive reuse area. I've included a picture just to kind of give you a, an idea of what some of the improvements will look like. On the left, you can see the guard tower, which they have um, retained, which is now gonna be, which has been incorporated into a roundabout as a feature. But as you can see, new curbing, sidewalk, striping, signage, all will be part of the project in order to bring it up to VDOT standards. Next slide, please. Here we have the Cinderbed Road Bikeway Project, which is being implemented by FCDOT. This project is going to construct continuous off-road shared use path at the end of Cinderbed Road in the south, all the way up to um, Newington Road and Franconia Springfield Metro Station in the north. There's going to be um, some improvements to the Park Authority's existing trails on the south side at Cinderbed Road. But primarily the work that's being done on parkland is using existing trails today. They will be um, considering putting in lighting and maintenance will be done as part of some of the trails we've done for commuter trails that you've seen in Tyson's. This project is located in the Lee District and it's currently in design. Next slide, please. The Compton Road Shared Use Path is a VDOT project. This is a new one um, that has not made the update yet. This is part of the ICE, I, it's related to the I-66 parallel trail project, but it's a standalone project. What will happen is the VDOT will construct a 10-foot shared use path along Compton Road from the Bull Run Special Events Center access road to just south of the I-66 bridge. 
This will tie into our Cub Run Stream Valley Park Trail, which exists there today, and it will include a pedestrian bridge. The picture I've included here shows work that's currently under construction being done by the I-66 project. The Compton Shared Use Path project is shown in red on either side of this. They had to make some adjustments to the overpass in order to allow a trail to fit underneath the bridge. This project is located in the Sully District and it's in, currently in state of design. Next slide, please. Here we have the Mount Vernon Highway Walkway Project. Um, this will complete the missing segments of the Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail between Richmond Highway and Southwood Drive for, for a length of approximately two miles. This is located in the Mount Vernon District and is currently in design and will be completing the um, pedestrian features in front of um, Grist Mill Park. There is extensive amounts of pedestrian improvements included. Um, some bus stop improvements, some bike share stations will be included with the project. So um, this will also complete the um, East Coast Greenway for the, to complete all of the East Coast Greenway in Fairfax County projects, which is an off-road bike facility um, throughout the county. Next slide, please. The Pleasant Valley Road Shared Use Path Project is also going to complete a long stretch of um, pedestrian and bike facilities on the east side of Pleasant Valley Road in the Sully District. This project is currently in design and we are working hard with the design team to make sure that any work that is needed to provide um, stormwater management facilities for this, for this project are taken care of, but do not cause any more harm to the sensitive environmental natures we have out there. Next slide, please. This Chesapeake Road Walkway Phase 2 is a new project. Uh, it's located in the Drainsville District. It's currently in design. Recently, we had work on the um, west side of the parkland in blue, shown in blue on the map. That was Phase 1 to add a sidewalk along Chesapeake Road. This project, Phase 2, will continue from that endpoint all the way to the Arlington County border. It will help provide ac uh, access to our Little Pimmit Run Stream Valley trails, as well as um, completing some safety improvements for uh, crossing crosswalks and whatnot. This is located in the Drainsville District and in design. Next slide, please. The Little River Turnpike Walkway Project is also new. It's located in the Mason District and is in design. This will provide about 1,500 linear feet of a sidewalk um, bus stop improvements, some retaining walls and drain with graded improvements, uh, as well as a water line that needs to be relocated. Um, this project starts at Evergreen Lane and Hillbrook and extends to the east along the south side of Little River Turnpike. Next slide. And finally, we have one of uh, a couple of Route 50 projects. This is going to complete a missing link of pedestrian, improve, pedestrian facilities along the north side of Route 50 at Towers Park. The new pathway you can see is shown in red in this photograph, or in, this, in the map, and it's located in the Providence District and it's currently in right-of-way acquisition. That's all I have for tonight for projects. Please take some time and review the attachment. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, as, as you know, we work on these projects all year round and so there's too much details to cover in one meeting, but hopefully this gives you a snapshot of some of the work that we're completing and gives you insight on new things coming your way. Any questions, Mr. Kendall? Okay. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, on the Little River Turnpike sidewalk that runs along the south side of Little River Turnpike and it actually abuts a park that's undeveloped. Um, there is an existing master plan for that park uh, I think uh, Jay and I have talked about that over the last, in the last month or in a month and a half. Um, there's been some interest in having that park developed. Um, it's right next to the library, so it would be perfect to have a park there. My only concern is in looking at it, it looks utterly overgrown, and I'm not really sure the slope on that property uh, will can be developed the way the original master plan says it could. But I'm thinking if we're going to get a sidewalk there, we need to look at that more closely as to when we would actually build a park 
that would be reachable by a sidewalk that is now being, being planned for construction. Sure, understood. We can take a look at that. And uh, like I said, it's a new project, so we'll be getting more details on that. Um, I do know that project's going to sit a little higher. Um, the park itself sits lower than Little River Turnpike, so there are going to be some retaining walls and drainage structures we're going to need to deal, to deal with, but it will also improve the bus shelter and give us better access to that park when and if it gets developed. So, Any other questions? Ten questions. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, very much. Uh, if there are no other questions, uh, thank, thank you again. And I'll ask now uh, Jasmine Kim to present the next item, which is the Tyson's and Reston status report. Thank you, Ken. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. This is Jasmine Kim, a senior park planner in the Planning and Development Division. Um, do I see the, okay, there it is. Thank you. So today I am going to provide you with a status update of urban park spaces in Tyson's and Reston Transit Station areas. Next slide, please. All right, so moving on to Tyson's, as you can see in this map, more than a dozen new publicly accessible urban park spaces have been delivered in Tyson since 2010. And approximately 95 acres of urban park spaces have been proffered. Um, in fact, this past year alone, 1.5 additional acres of urban park spaces have been proffered with the latest approval of the Boro rezoning in Tyson's. Next slide. And over the last decade, we have made a significant progress towards meeting the goals of the Tyson's Comprehensive Plan for Athletic Fields, as we have reached more than halfway to the goal of receiving proffer commitments for 20 athletic fields. Um, additionally, since 2010, uh, we added two new full-size rectangular fields at Ken Lawrence Park and Tyson's Technology Park, otherwise known as the Quantum Field. And we have also upgraded a diamond field at the Westgate Elementary School and received a proffer commitments to build nine or more fields in the future. Next slide. And now I would like to introduce you to a new online interactive data hub called the Tyson's Tracker, which replaces the static um, version of the Tyson's annual reports in a format that is more interactive and engaging to the public. And here is a link to the website if you'd like to explore the data hub by yourself, but I'm going to run through the major components of the website now. Next slide. As you can see, the urban park spaces section of the Tyson's tracker is divided into four different sections, with the first section describing the county's adopted urban park service level standards and plan recommendations for parks and recreational facil facilities in Tyson's. Next slide. And we move on to the second section, which compares the existing and proffered park facilities with a map to your right that indicates the existing park spaces in dark green, proffered park spaces in light blue, and delivered park spaces in burgundy. Next slide. And as you scroll down this section, you will find a bar graph that compares the public park acreage ownership since 2010 as well as a pie chart that breaks down the acres of urban park spaces and Tyson's by the different types of park, uh, urban park spaces. Next. And the third section briefly highlights the latest park spaces that have been delivered in Tyson's. Next. Such as the Perch at Capital One and the Bexley at the Highland District and a new dog park at the Mile, which is located north of the Highgate building. Next slide. In the last section uh, of the fourth uh, tab shows the progress we have made to reach the comprehensive plan's goal of receiving 20 athletic field commitments in Tyson's with a map that shows the location of the proffered athletic field fields and Tyson's. And moving on, our next steps for this year is to update this data hub with more interactive maps that the public could use to locate new urban park spaces and its amenities in Tyson's. Next slide. And now uh, I want to switch gears and give you a status update of urban park spaces in Reston Transit Station areas. 
since 2014, approximately 59 acres of new park spaces have been proffered and 21 new urban park spaces have been delivered, um, but no additional park spaces were proffered this past year. Next slide. And because there weren't any additional park spaces delivered uh, this past year, I'm going to highlight some significant athletic field commitments that have been made over the past couple of years in Reston. Um, in 2020, an athletic field and warm-up area has been proffered at Isaac Newton Square, and a seven-acre land dedication has been made to the Park Authority for a new recreational park facility that is to be developed on Hunter Mill Road. Also at Woodland Park, a T-ball or wiffle ball diamond field has been built and approximately $28 million have been proffered for new fields and existing field upgrades in Reston since 2014. Next. And now I would like to show you an interactive data hub of Reston Urban Parks which actually won the county's GIS Excellence Award for the most significant spatial data contribution. And um, similar to the Tyson's tracker that I showed you earlier, the slide includes a link to the website below. But again, I'm going to run through the major components of the website now. Next slide. So the Reston Urban Parks Monitoring Story Map was developed in coordination with the Department of Planning and Development uh, to provide you uh, with more information to the public, to provide more information to the public as to where current and planned urban park spaces are located within the rest and transit station areas. And this story map is broken down into three different tabs. And you can see the first tab here, uh, which briefly introduces you to the comprehensive plan requirements of urban park spaces in rest and transit station areas with some photos of urban park spaces I took, basic instructions on how to use the map, links to the park planning web page, as well as master plan document. Next slide. And the second tab describes the urban park service level standards and provides brief descriptions and sample images of five different types of urban parks found in the urban parks framework. And in this section, you will find a map that shows the proffered urban park spaces and rest and transit station areas color coded by the park typology as you scroll down. And slightly different from the Tyson's tracker, this map is interactive. So you will be able to zoom in and out and type an address on the top left corner, filter the park status and see more details about each urban park spaces when you click on them, such as the zoning application name, the size of the park space, the status, the type and more. Next slide. And this third section focuses on the proffered recreational facilities, which may include things like trails, playgrounds, sport courts, athletic fields, dog parks, and more. Um, and this image show, shown here is a perspective of the new athletic field facility that will be built at the Isaac Newton Square in Reston. Next slide. And um, one amazing feature I want to highlight is that we have added to the section an interactive map that comes with the comes with the ability to filter the urban park spaces by the type of recreational facilities and park amenities. Um, the filter button, which is shown below the address bar on the top left corner, will um, give you an option to locate the urban park spaces with specific park amenities, such as an athletic field, a sport court, a dog park, a playground, outdoor gym, and other recreational amenities in our urban park spaces. Um, so for example, if you would like to locate park spaces with water features only, you can do this by clicking on the filter button and click indicating yes under water feature as shown on the right bottom graphic. Then the map will automatically filter and only show you the park spaces with water features only. Next slide. And this concludes my presentation. So thank you so much for listening and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Ken Quincy, any questions for Jasmine? No, thank you, Jasmine. Good report. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. You all have done a great job on both of these projects. Thank you, Ken. Okay. If there are no questions for Jasmine, we'll uh, turn the meeting over to Doug Tipsward to present the next item. Thank you, Ken. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Doug Tipsort. I'm a landscape architect and park planner mm -hmm. in the um, planning and development uh, branch. Um, uh, next slide, please. So tonight I'm going to provide a quick um, overview of the Clinton John Tree Master Plan revisions uh, for the board's consideration. Um, the, the original master plan was approved in 2002. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the diagram on the right, uh, it originally consisted of three uh, development phases. The first one is the phase one development that was constructed in 2006. That's the, the large all-inclusive playground and main parking lot uh, and uh, bioretention pond. Uh, phase two was developed in 2019 and that included the secondary parking lot and uh, additional pathways. Um, and then phase three is what's called the house and garden zone. And it has not been developed to date. And so I just wanted to point that out because that is the primary focus of this master plan revision. Uh, in the master plan document that I've provided in your board package, you'll notice that uh, in the appendix, we are proposing an alternative development concept uh, that we are calling option two. Um, and it's mostly just regarding this phase three area. So option one uh, remains what the original concept was that um, was approved in the original master plan uh, in 2002. And option two is what we've added, which is the alternative uh, concept. And that alternative concept is um, focusing on the introduction of a, um, a new art center or similar community focused use to further arts and educational opportunities in the county. And we, um, to date, uh, we've gone through our full master plan process. We've met with the public twice, once in December of 2020, and more recently, again, in October of 2021, so just last October. And we re received a fair amount of, of uh, feedback and comment from the community. Next slide. So just to quickly recap on what this option two uh, um, entails, uh, you'll see that the concept development graphic on the right, it, as I mentioned, includes an art center uh, or similar use, which would provide a space for social functions, gallery and exhibition spaces and classroom spaces. Um, we still have the existing house or homestead uh, which would be renovated and available for office meeting space use. There are additionally outdoor gathering spaces and new garden spaces, outdoor classrooms, um, new parking opportunities, tree preservation and new planting buffers are included. Uh, there's a proposed gazebo and there are the existing trails which could potentially be enhanced with artwork or, or seating to uh, uh, to add to the, the experience of the, of the trail. So just to summarize um, the, the, the public comment we received, uh, we received a, a few comments, uh, specifically the one, one, one comment that we received a fair amount of was the size and appearance of the new facility in the graphic that we were, we were showing. Um, there was sort of a literal uh, interpretation of the way the building was shaped and the size. Um, we, but we uh, have addressed that by changing the graphic to represent more of a bubble to suggest it's more conceptual in nature, which in fact it is in master plans are conceptual in nature. Uh, so by showing sort of a, a non-suggestive bubble that is this, the, the, the use and, and the function remain the same, but the, the size and shape are not to be taken too literally. Um, we also received uh, concerns about the, the appearance and visibility of the new building. And, and we, in our master plan, mitigated that by proposing new planted buffer areas along the east and west edge to sort of, and those would mostly be evergreen plants. And that would be to, to help um, block some of the views from that adjacent uh, neighbors might, might experience. And then there were other concerns were hours of operation, just concerns about the park usage after 9 p.m. And there were concerns regarding the types of uses that would be occurring, um, concerns and uses that may impact noise and lighting impacts on the site, and just parking impacts and traffic impacts that those uses might 
also provide. And so I um, address this in the master plan by um, indicating that, you know, these types of specific details on facility design, usage, hours of operation, those kinds of things are, are reviewed and approved via sub, uh, separate public processes prior to development. Those processes are, are administered by the, you know, the Fairfax County Department of Planning and Development and the Planning Commission um, via what's called the 2232 process and the special exception process. And additional hearings are typically required as part of that process uh, as well. So the, the next steps, as I mentioned, um, we, we're at the end of the process. So really uh, it's to hear your thoughts and kind of um, hopefully uh, look to acquire um, your endorsement moving forward. So with that, does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you, Doug. Uh, if there's no questions, I will now ask if there's a consensus to move this forward to the board for approval at tonight's board meeting. Yes. Yes. Francis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing else, uh, I will adjourn the Planning and Development Committee. You are timely, Mr. Quincy. Very timely. That's my goal in life. <laughs> Um, has, uh, has Mr. Zook joined us? We saw has, that he joined. And has, uh, Abena joined us? I do not see her yet. Okay. She's joining. I think she's joining right now. I think her name yes. is here. Yep. Yeah. Dr. Du, can I check your mic? Hello. Great. Chairman Bowie, everybody is present for you to. All right. Pull so, into... uh, Dr. Dr. Adu and Jim Zook, would you please state your names and from where you are participating? Hello, I'm Abna Adu. I'm participating from my home in the Lee District. Uh, this is Jim Zook. I'm, I'm participating from my home in the Springfield District. Thank you. Can all of the members adequately hear Mr. Zook and Dr. Adu? Yes. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that they be admitted to this uh, board meeting um, per the um, ordinance. I'll second the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries. All right. So we will start the um, January 12th, 2022 board meeting this evening. This is Bill Bowie. And all of the members of the board this evening are in attendance. Um, thank you for joining. Um, we always start the uh, board meetings with a public comment period. Um, Judy Peterson, do we have anyone here this evening to participate? Yes, Chairman Bowie. Good evening, everybody. My name is Judy Peterson. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Park Authority. We do have two speakers this evening, and we will start with our first speaker, who is Ron Hutchinson, President of the Evermay Community Association. Ron, you will have five minutes to speak. And if you would please begin and state your name for the record. Yes, thank you. I'm Ron Hutchinson. Uh, as Judy Judith said, I'm the president of the Evermay Community Association, which is the homeowner association, which represents the 159 homes in the Evermay subdivision. And 32 of those homes are adjacent to Clammy Jontry Park. And I'm here to speak tonight about the master plan revision. Uh, 
we were heavily involved in the drafting of the uh, original master plan back in 2002, as well as the memorandum of understanding that was specifically drafted to address the um, development and usage of, of the park in phase three, which is what the master plan revision is now addressing. Uh, and we've been very much appreciative of the outreach by the McLean Project for the Arts and Laurie Carbonau in particular, who brought us in the very beginning and we've worked with them along the way. So uh, we have been pleased with the process. And our only comment on the master plan revision was and still is that we want to ensure that uh, the adjacent residents are, have input into any details as this gets developed uh, and further along beyond the master plan revision stage uh, so that we are ensure that um, what the terms of the memorandum of understanding are complied with and most likely will require uh, additions and revisions given that the uh, planned uh, McLean Project for the Arts Center is pretty much a material change to what was envisioned back in 2002 for the phase three development. Back then the uh, usage was envisioned simply as potential rental space for weddings and special events. And now the development of the art center is, is a major change, but something that we're, we're behind in support as long as we can ensure that uh, the lighting and other noise restrictions and things that are addressed in the MOU and additional issues are resolved as it goes forward. So that's what we're here to make sure uh, going forward, we still have input. And as we've now been further informed about the uh, processes that'll occur as it goes forward, including the uh, special exemption process and the 2232 process, I think that's what it's called, we're comfortable that we'll have a voice. So uh, as it stands, we were uh, fine with the revisions that were made to the re revised plan in the, in, the, in the latest version. So we're, we're, we're behind this and just want to make sure we continue to have a say and a voice in what goes forward. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. Um, Judy, do we have another speaker signed up? Uh, yes, we do. And our second speaker this evening is Lori Carboneau, Executive Director for the McLean Project for the Arts. Lori, if you would begin, you will also have five minutes. There we go. Am I in? You are, and we can hear you. Good evening, I'm Lori Carboneau, Executive Director of McLean Project for the Arts, and I am coming to you from my home in the Drainsville District. Chairman Bowie, Mr. and Mr. Hackman, to all the Park Authority Board and staff, it is my honor on behalf of the entire McLean community, goodness gracious, I'm nervous, this is an exciting night. Uh, on behalf of all the McLean Project for the Arts, from our Chairman, Barbara Hawthorne, our entire board of 44 members, our advisory board, the families who come and experience the art in, in McLean and who experience the opportunity to be in that grand park where all can play. It is truly an honor to have been a part of the process to date. I appreciate the teamwork with uh, the Ron Hutchinson and the Evermay Community Association and the chance to work with them on both the concept as well as the specifics. And we are committed to carrying on that partnership through what will be the next set of stages of, of discussion through zoning and 2232 and hopefully a very long and productive and positive neighborly uh, experience going forward. The McLean Project for the Arts is a 60 year old organization that has been committed to connecting community and the arts in the region in a, in, in, in a way of excellence that demonstrates the excellence that's in our hometown and that it is in our region. One of the things that I wanna make sure that the community is aware of is that McLean Project for the Arts has a very strong outreach program called MPA Artreach. It's a 30-year-old program that has won countless awards and we are very proud that one of our strongest partnerships is with Service Source, 
another Fairfax County Park Authority partner. And we are excited about the fact that uh, there will be the opportunity for art in a environment where all children can play insofar as art is one of the opportunities that gives language when language is difficult, brings joy in, brings connection across a community, across ages. And the idea of this master plan being put forward is the, the culmination of, of a vision that MPA has had, but very importantly, of the opportunity that the park has in bringing together resources that represent the community in a profoundly uh, responsible and profoundly uh, elegant and profoundly accomplished way. And we appreciate that the One Fairfax Goals of the Park Authority's uh, joint, uh, joint shepherding with the county are going to have the opportunity through this master plan revision to make sure that the cultural elements and the learning elements of art can be present in, out in the Drainsville District. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All Thank right. You. On to the business of the evening. We have uh, admin item number one, which is the resolution honoring Wesley Scott Ham upon his retirement from the Fairfax County Park Authority. Ken Quincy, I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries. Whereas, Twin Lakes Golf Course General Manager Wesley Scott Ham is retiring after more than 27 years of outstanding service to the Fairfax County Park Authority via increasingly important and responsible roles in golf enterprises at numerous sites. And whereas Scott, as he is known to friends and colleagues, began his work with the Park Authority in 1995 as a seasonal laborer too following distinguished service in the United States Army and in large measure to fulfill his desire and passion to play as much golf as possible. Whereas Scott worked at the Jefferson District Golf Course for just one year, but attributes his career path and success to his mentor and friend, then general manager, Jeff Davidson, who also approved Scott's request to marry his then fiance, now wife, Denise, on the golf course in 1996. And whereas Scott went on to work at Greendale Golf Course as a utility worker, then moved on to the Burke Lake Golf Course where he served as the senior utility worker, noting that one unique pleasure at the site was tinkering with the park's train when it needed repairs. And whereas in 1990, May 1998, Ham moved to Twin Lakes, serving as the labor crew chief during the growing of the Oaks course, a time of accomplishment too, off to as Ham contributed to efforts to reroute the lakes course, construct the maintenance facility, dredge the North Lake, renovate the greens and bunkers, replace the North Dam, and replace the irrigation system. And whereas Twin Lakes became home until his retirement as course general manager, and golf was a central part of his professional life, as well as personal life in that he married his wife on the course at Jefferson in 1996 and credits his success to his mentors and caring peers, including Jeff Davidson, Doug Salati, Rick Owens, Bob Studholm, Peter Fury, and Barbara Cos Cosgrove. And whereas Scott considers it to have been an honor and a privilege, almost a dream, to be manager of this 36 hole golf course and be surrounded by so many people, good people along the way, looking out for me. And now therefore be it resolved by the Fairfax County Park Authority Board that it, it expresses appreciation and thanks to Wesley Scott Ham for his dedicated and outstanding contributions to the Park Authority and the residents of Fairfax County adopted by the Fairfax County Park Authority Board on January 12th, 2022. Congratulations, West.
Is he here? Does he have any words? Any comments from uh, the board? Ken? Well, I just want to tell Scott that he'll be missed, but you will find, and I can vouch for it, that retirement life is pretty good. <laughs> I wish you the best. How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and, and best wishes to you, uh, to Wesley, in your retirement. And I'm sure you won't be a stranger at the courses. Connie Wide, admin item number two, is the adoption of the minutes of the December 8th, 2021 Park Authority Board meeting. So moved. Second. This is Mike Thompson, second. Oh, I'm sorry, Ken Quincy. So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion carries. Action item in the Drainsville District. Approval, A1 approval of the Clement John Tree Park Master Plan Revision, alternative option for phase three development. And Mr. I Chair think uh, Tim would like to. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I move the approval of the uh, Clemmy uh, Chantry um, Park Master Plan Revision the alternative option for phase three development. Ken Quincy, I second the motion. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I may, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank staff and involved for a really terrific job in this revision. I think the uh, uh, proposed revision reflects well on the uh, uh, reflects well the future possibilities for Clemmy John Tree in light of the comments that have been received, and I thoroughly support the uh, revision. And I'm glad to hear that uh, uh, Ron and certainly uh, Laurie do as as well. I appreciate, uh, in fact, their their remarks and their insight. Um, I think it reflects the ongoing uh, openness and coordination um, cooperation that's been happening on this uh, revision, and I hope to see that continue, and I hope uh, that uh, FCPA will be part of that uh, uh, openness and, and cooperation. The revision gives the, uh, the park authority uh, the uh, flexibility in how Clemmy may be further developed, if in fact it is, and creates the potential for new and exciting opportunities for the community and the county. Uh, as uh, Ms. Carboneau has uh, indicated, there are um, willing and well-qualified uh, prospective partners of which MPA is one who are definitely ready uh, and willing to work with us in the pursuit of these uh, opportunities. Uh, I, I think um, the park authority to um, give everybody some comfort will in fact, analyze any such proposals thoroughly and will be sensitive to uh, any uh, um, uh, overall community interests that, that may be uh, um, uh, ex ex expressed. So again, to the, uh, um, the staff and to the community and to MPA and others, thank you for all your efforts and work up to this point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? All those in favor, uh, Jim? Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, I guess the, the thought I had was, um, I assume based upon what I've heard is the Park Authority staff is going to be continually involved with this as it develops over time versus um, it flipping to the planning and development scenario where that community dialogue would be handled basically by planners who had not yet uh, been, I guess, involved in the discussions to date. So I, I, I'm assuming that the Park Authority staff will continue to be involved uh, throughout the entire process and there not be a disconnect between a handoff between the Park Authority and the other review process. Yes, sir. I would I would certainly agree with that. And yeah. I'm sure that that will that will be the case <laughs> throughout. Jay, is there any other to any other reason to believe otherwise? No. Um. Just to this, Jay Cole, um, Executive Director of Park Authority. Um, the master plan allows for the opportunity to look for something. So they're two completely separate 
um, processes. Once the master plan has been approved, then we will work through the um, the uh, the process culminating in the 2233 process. We, there, there won't be a handoff. It's our it's our property. We'll be we'll be managing it. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed say nay. That motion carries and is approved. All right, on to chairman's matters. I hope everyone had a happy holiday and happy new year to everyone. It's uh, It's been a little bit challenging. Um, of course, we, uh, we thought we had kind of made it out of the woods with, uh, with COVID and we've been thrown a curve here. Um, and so we're back to virtual meetings. Right now, we're just gonna do it a month at a time. So right now we're committed to this meeting and the next meeting uh, to be virtual. Hopefully the surge will be over and we'll begin to, uh, to reconvene in person, maybe in February, certainly hopefully by March. Um, so it's for it's for everyone's safety, it's for the public safety, and it's for all of us old men that don't want to get exposed to this thing. <laughs> because we don't have any old women on the board. Right. Of course. Um, right. <laughs> um, we, we, uh, we, we're experiencing a, a, a couple of losses um, that I just want to acknowledge. Um, Stephanie Leadham uh, left us as the uh, Director of Planning and Development. We wish her nothing but the best. We want to thank her for her contributions over the time that she was here. Uh, she brought a bunch of new ideas and certainly a non-jaundiced eye to uh, that, that particular piece of our business. Uh, and we want to thank her for her contributions. And then the everlasting Andy Dorlester who is going to move across the street. Of course, uh, Andy is the other half of the Andy and Sandy show that continued and basically has modeled uh, so many parts of the county, but specifically Reston and Tyson's and the, the park improvements and the parks that are coming as a part of their diligent, 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 persistence and steadfast um, steadfast uh, duties to the park authority, um, they delivered. And so best wishes to, to Andy um, in her new job uh, across the street. And certainly I hope she will not be a stranger. Um, I hope uh, that all of you have um, received your statement of economic interest. I am trying to save you $250 uh, fine. So please fill that out. It's an easy form to fill out and email back and get instant acknowledgement that you're off of that list to be fined on February the 1st if you haven't turned it in. If you serve on another board authority or commission, this one, um, one affidavit will include all of those and support all of those commissions, boards, or directors that you're on. So just telling you that. We did have a sports tourism task force uh, meeting um, in, uh, in the, after we met in December. And uh, uh, most of the conversation in that meeting was around governance and what are next steps. And, Certainly the next steps are we have uh, this, you know, 278 page report, but nobody has yet stepped up to commit to writing a check. And I continue to emphasize that, that, you know, it's all well and good. And, you know, we've spent, we've literally spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours on this project over the last three, over the last two and a half years between all of the members of the task force and consultants and staff that have been involved and it's tremendous. But, but we need a commitment from somewhere, somehow in order to move this thing forward. And uh, so the next step will be um, concerning governance, 
And how, if this thing gets off the ground, how do we work that whole thing? And as we get additional details, myself and Mike Thompson will provide uh, information back to the board on the progress of that. Um, I did have an opportunity to um, speak to Stella Polarski, who is the new um, chairman of the school board. We had a absolutely great conversation. Um, I think that uh, things will be straight, very much straightened out. Any misunderstandings between, you know, what we're responsible for and what we can do to support schools and what schools can do to take advantage of what our offerings are. Uh, and so we've agreed to talk again shortly. And uh, we have both talked about a joint um, FCPS board, FCPA board, joint board meeting, similar to what they have with the BOS and that we have with the BOS, so they can understand where we're coming from and what's important in the pecking order of the, of the things that we do. And then last but not least, uh, we had the first uh, meeting last night of the redistricting commission. Uh, RAC 2 is um, strictly dedicated to looking at the potential renaming of the nine districts and the 270 some precincts within Fairfax County. Uh, we will be meeting every Tuesday and Thursday from six until eight from now until March 1st. So feel free that if you have any feelings or input that you would like to provide to, uh, to uh, that particular commission, you can send them through me or you can certainly attend those meetings. All of those meetings from now until March 1st will be virtual and will be open to the public. And so um, with that, I will turn it over to Jay. Good evening, everyone. Jay Paul. Um, one of the benefits of being virtual is I actually get to see your faces and not the eyes behind the mask. So that's lovely to see everyone. Um, I'm going to start on a couple of sad notes. Um, we've had a few losses um, uh, our colleagues the last um, month. Um, so on January 7th, um, Sipa Sooth, I'm saying my name, Sai. Um, Nandavong passed away due to a sudden illness. Um, after a long career in IT in the IT field, Sai's love for the outdoors brought him to a position with the Area 3 um, as a seasonal employee in 2017. His hard work and passion translated into a promotion to a maintenance worker position in 2020 and recently to a senior maintenance worker in 2021. Sai's eagerness to learn and his attention to detail made him a valuable member of our team um, and we will miss him uh, greatly. On December 22nd, um, we lost Pine Crest Golf Superintendent Michael Chaporis. Uh, Mike was well liked and greatly um, and a greatly admired colleague who began working with the Park Authority in 1985 as a driving range attendant at Burke Lake Park. His career took an upward trajectory as the quality of his work, his professionalism, and his ability to get the job done were recognized as he worked his way through the ranks, culminating in his promotion to superintendent at Pinecrest in 2017. So I just want to acknowledge those two um, losses to our Park Authority um, family and our um, thoughts go to the family. Um, on a, a happier note, I just wanted to, to note that our summer camp registration began yesterday, January the 11th. Um, it has been the most successful first day of summer camp registration ever um, calculated by all metrics. Um, some of the numbers, um, and these are, and I'll give you how much it's up, and how much it's up is um, measured against our previous best registration day, which was February 2020. So we had just over 10,500 registrants, which is up 36%. We made nearly 3.3 million in revenue, also up 36%. We had nearly 3,200 unique participants registered, which is up 19%. And in that one day, we filled 43% of our capacity for camps. So um, there was some hoot hooting and hollering um, over here. Um, uh, congratulations to those uh, 
parents who had their lives together enough to register for camps yesterday. I'm not one of those um, people. I can't even fathom um, the summer from myself and my kids, but um, we're very, very excited. I'd like to take all the credit, but I think that um, vaccinations for kids over five is what um, did the trick for that. And we're very um, grateful to that. Um, I wanted to uh, also, we're very pleased to announce that Laura Grape will be our new resource management division director. Um, Laura comes from the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District, and we're excited to have her on the team. She will start um, next month. So we're excited about that. Um, I want to take a moment to, to thank um, our operations staff um, under Kurt for uh, snow removal. We had a couple of snow, large snow events. I think that people um, generally can um, um, not appreciate how much work goes into clearing our parking lots and our driveways so that our um, residents can get to our rec centers and other facilities. Um, sometimes staff drive in before the sun comes up during snow to make sure that we've salted and shoveled and all the logistics that goes into determining when we open um, and backing that up to when we um, um, bring people in. So I want to thank Kurt. I want to thank Sarah. Um, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of logistic work just to um, make sure we get our facilities open and running. So um, there's that. Um, I wanted to let everybody know I did an interview with Supervisor Gross for Mason Matters, which is running on Channel 16 this month. Um, uh, you can check it out or Google Mason Matters um, Channel 16. I think it'll um, come right up. Um, so there's that one. And um, I don't know, make sure I got everything. Uh, oh, um, I have continued my park tour. I hustled through um, the Christmas break with a lot of days that I could spend um, tootling around Fairfax. I almost wanted to call everybody up. Uh, Dr. Carter, I was in your neighborhood again. I almost picked up the phone to see if you were you were around, but I realized that you know I've been sitting for for so long. I'm up to 270 parks. Wow right now. Um, so I have, uh, I'm doing segments of it and it's paying off and being able to talk to people about um, the different parks that we have. And then lastly, I want to, Allison, could you bring up the, uh, we had our uh, first hike photo contest. Um, it's first and second and people put in their um, photographs. I just wanted to share the winners of the photo contest. So the first one, um, James Stone won for People's Choice. Um, that photo was from Hidden Pond Nature Center. Um, oh, thank you, Allison, for making it look a little larger. Sarah Baldwin, who's not um, our Sarah, although she's won, so she's now our Sarah, um, won for the Judge's Choice. Um, Erin Nicole Graff won for the Director's Choice. Um, I loved this photo. Um, it spoke to me. You can just, you can hear this photo as a mother of two children. You know that this is the moment that um, the parent has let go of the kid's hand and let them fly free and have fun. So that was my director's choice photo. Um, Billy Swistak, um, one for best in show for landscape scenery for that photo of Burke Lake Park. Ashley D'Antonio, one for best in show for people. For this photo. Elaine Starr, I love this picture of them sitting on the turtles. Um, one for best in show for wildlife. And then Mary Robinson, one for best in show for pets. And is that the last one? And that's it. I just wanted to thank um, the staff who made that happen. Um, John Berlin was the project manager for that. And then Kristen Bratt and Judy Peterson and our judges, Nicole Connors and Julie Kang. So a little festivity at the end with some really awesome photos. If you look through all of them, um, I think that the um, Kristen said that uh, it's probably one of the best groupings of photos. I was worried because it was such a rainy New Year's day that we weren't gonna get. I think that that really brought out some really great um, pictures. So that's all that I have. Thank you. And talking about Kristen Brad, congratulations to Kristen. Kristen oh. just 
just got her master's in public administration from George Mason University. Congratulations for all her hard work and efforts in going through that. And let me tell you, I watched Mason Matters. And if you uh, really, you did, uh, Jay, you did a great job and a great service to the, the Park Authority. And uh, Penny looked like she was just thoroughly eating it up and, and enjoying the whole experience. So if you have not had a, an opportunity to see it, please go out to channel 16 or, or we'll send the link out so you can see it because it is, uh, it is really, really a good interview. Um, Mr. Quincy? Ken Quincy, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, second your comments about uh, Stephanie Leadham and uh, Andy Dorlester. Uh, we wish them the best. Andy, as Bill mentioned, was uh, one of the principal rudders for the Park Authority on the Tyson's Corner project, as well as Reston. Uh, I personally was involved with Tyson's from day one. And uh, between Sandy and Andy, they kept us on the straight and narrow, and we had a good voice uh, in that uh, development and still have a, a good voice. Uh, and just a point of clarification, uh, we don't have any old men on the board. We do have vintage men, however. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ken, for clearing that up. Okay. And I hope everybody had a good holiday. And I look forward, as I'm sure we all do, to some return to normalcy. Thank you, sir. Jim? On mute. Jim Zook? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess a couple of things. I wish the board uh, in the coming year to uh, maintain their health and uh, their sense of humor. Um, those are two things that I think are strategically important. Uh, the other, the other uh, issue, or not issue, but I hope that I have is that I, I apparently have uh, in my mind, lost track of um, our collective staff efforts on one Fairfax and uh, reflecting on uh, the uh, future coming with regard to bond issues and the like. Uh, I'm just really very curious as to uh, where we have uh, deficiencies um, if we're at that stage, uh, and if not, uh, where are we with regard to that? So uh, either one of two things, I, I would like, uh, if it's appropriate to meet with the staff, if they're ready to just educate me a little bit about what's been going on or where we are, or in the alternative, uh, sometime in the next couple months, um, address the board with uh, an update as to uh, what we know and where we're going. So with that, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thanks, Jim. Um, I can tell you that, that that's very, very actively being pursued right now. I think that uh, stay tuned. I think uh, staff will be able to give us an update on kind of where they are. They've been putting their heads together and talking to the folks across the street. There have been a lot of meetings going on. Uh, specifically around the one Fairfax issue and and equity and, and how do we make that um, happen within the structure that we have. So a lot of metrics, a lot of discussion, uh, but the people across the street are very, very interested in, and Jay and staff will have updates on that uh, pretty soon. But from what I've heard so far, um, it's very positive. Ron? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I don't have a lot of words. Um, I really am kind of distraught at the passing of Mike Chippis. He, we were not just acquaintances uh, on the golf course, and I credit Mike with being one of the people who over the last five years turned Pinecrest around, uh, be it COVID or anything else. He was the instigator of all the changes that occurred there that made it a positive place to work. And he will be sorely missed. Um, my thoughts go out to his family. That's me. Thank you. Tim? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tim Hackman. Um, uh, I uh, 
would also like to uh, uh, give a, a big shout out and big thank yous to both Stephanie and Andy for all their very significant contributions to the uh, the Park Authority. They were uh, delightful people with whom to work and and. Uh, um, uh, I really enjoyed their their tenure here. Uh, so uh, best wishes to them on their on their future careers. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I pass. Linwood, I'd just like to take a second to um, um, reach out and show appreciation for uh, all the park staff, especially several uh, that are in this meeting right now that are dealing with uh, the problems of vacancies, um, COVID. The later the weather lately, uh, the inflation and costs of lots of the uh, projects that we have bonded. It's uh, tough mental times, I know, for, for a lot of you. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, you knew that uh, you were recognized, or at least I recognized you for this hardship you're going through. I'm sure everybody else recognizes you also uh, and appreciates and respects all the efforts that you're doing. Thank you very, very much. Hang in there. Thanks, Linwood. That's appreciated. Mike? Thank you, sir. This is Mike Thompson. Um, two things. One, I, I want to thank staff. I don't remember whose idea it was. So I'm just going to collectively assume it was everybody on staff's idea. But um, the last week, the fact that the rec centers and stuff were open, yes, it was a lot of hard work and I was going out and shoveling and all that stuff. But somebody also had the great idea to decouple our closure policy from Fairfax County Public Schools a bunch of years ago. And that was a, that last week was proof as to why that was such a good idea. <clears throat> so I just, I just want to say kudos to, to whoever said, hey, why are we, you know, we've done it this way forever, but we ought to do it a different way. And, and last week was proof that, that again, that was a great idea. So thank you to, to staff for that. Um, and then finally, just I just want to point out on the photo contest, uh, Mr. Chairman, that there are two wonderful pictures of Burke Lake, um, which is the only lake that is represented twice. Uh, so I just thought I'd point that out for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I appreciate that. And uh, all of Fairfax County appreciation as well. I'm, I'm too big a man to take that bait right now. <laughs> 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 Kyle. I pass. Thank you. <laughs> Maggie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just want to reiterate the condolences have been expressed and also the thanks to the staff. And then I have a couple of things. Um, the first is on Monday, January 24th, there is going to be a photo opportunity for the Sully Woodland Stewardship Education Center groundbreaking. Um, no speeches, just a chance to get your photo taken. It's on Monday, the 24th at 11 a.m. You should have gotten something in your email for it. And I really would like to ask uh, the board folks to show up, uh, mostly because I am not gonna be there. I would love to be there, but assuming that um, our COVID tests are negative. Me and my family will be in some warm spots down in uh, Belize. So we uh, will- point, point of clarification. I, I think I saw on my, on, at least I have it on my calendar at 10. So, so okay. we should just double check the time. Um, maybe Judy or someone that the, the announcement that came through by my email says 11. So um, maybe some one of the staff folks can clarify, but I do want to also thank everybody. I will uh, again, assuming these um, uh, COVID tests all come back negative, I will not be at the next meeting. So thank you very much, Judy. Can you or someone from the staff confirm what time that uh, uh, photo? Oh, it is eleven. eleven. It is eleven. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, my apologies. Right. My apologies. All right. I just. Thanks I just want to. I just want to point out that Tim was concerned about that point of clarification. My point of clarification is, um, Maggie, I thought you were taking us all to Belize. <laughs> uh, you are welcome to come, but I think the ship might be full. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you. I've got some dear friends that moved to Belize about two years ago, and they love it. Out of San Diego. Mr. Khan? All right, so kudos to the staff for all the great work. And uh, just an FYI to everyone that you will be hearing from me in the coming days. 
about some important matters. And I'll be reaching out with for to a lot, whole lot of you guys, and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Thank you. Abena? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A belated Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you had a good break. Um, I just wanted to share that I happily received a letter over the break reappointing me to the board. So unfortunately, you're stuck with me for a few more years. Uh, and thank you to the staff for all your continued hard work. Thank you. And last but not least, Dr. Carter. Greetings all, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. It's been a wonderful year. I uh, and staff and looking, I'm looking to this coming year and um, we're looking forward for much better times ahead for us all. Um, I want to thank uh, the executive director, Cole, for coming out and uh, visiting with wonderful, with me in wonderful Lee District. I had the opportunity to uh, take her to, or she followed me over to Huntley Meadows. Um, I think that that is the very best park in the whole wide world, no matter how many photographs were taken there. So again, <laughs> I thank you and we'll um, see you around. Thank you. All right, everybody, thank you for your time and patience. Linwood, we got you home before 8.30 this evening. <laughs> and so uh, with that, we are adjourned. Take bye care. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.